In her final blog post in October 2017, Daphne Caruana Galizia wrote, There are crooks everywhere you look now. The situation is desperate. Within hours, she was assassinated by a car bomb. The investigative journalist was well known in Malta for exposing corruption at the highest levels. And for her family and many of her supporters, it was that work that got her killed. Her murder has sparked a political crisis in Malta. The Prime Minister announced he would resign. His former Chief of Staff has been arrested. And several close allies of the government are accused of being involved. Despite all the allegations, Prime Minister Joseph Muscat denies any wrongdoing. Last week, Daphne Caruana Galizia's son spoke to us here on the Newsmakers and it's clear he believes the government still has plenty to hide. In the past two weeks, uh, one sickening detail after another has emerged showing how, how very closely linked the Prime Minister and the people around him were to the cover-up of my mother's assassination. Today in court, we found out that the middleman contracted to hire hitmen to place a bomb under my mother's car seat was actually an employee of the government and he was given this job by the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff directly. So now we already have three or four people employed in the office of the Prime Minister who are directly linked to, to the middleman in my mother's assassination. I've now put those allegations to Malta's government. I spoke to Justice Minister Owen Bonici and began by asking him whether the growing weight of evidence against the office of the Prime Minister means he should not only resign immediately, but also be investigated. What I can say uh, is that the Prime Minister left no stone unturned for this case to be solved. Once, uh, when, when Daphne Caruana Galizia's horrendous murder occurred, which was a murder which shook the whole nation, the Prime Minister immediately um, received uh, an offer from the United States to, to send over FBI, an offer which the Prime Minister immediately accepted. Secondly, when there was a middleman, alleged middleman, who said that he will spill the beans if he were to be given a pardon in order to you know, testify everything he knew about the case, the Prime Minister immediately um, gave this pardon as soon as he was convinced by international institutions that the evidence was corroborated. So the Prime Minister did all he could so that this murder be solved. And I think that speaks volume about his resolve in order to solve the murder. The man who was charged, the businessman Fennec, testified that Shemri, the chief of staff, now former chief of staff, had leaked information to him regarding the investigation, had divulged that his phone had been tapped and warned him of police raids in advance. So you have the chief of staff divulging information to a prime suspect, and you have two ministers implicated. You have the tourism minister, the economy minister, and bodyguards as well. Is that not enough to have the prime minister himself investigated, sir? Well, as you know, um, in Malta and elsewhere in Europe, there is the presumption of innocence. And I cannot say anything which might impute criminal responsibility on someone who has not declared to be guilty. If I do that, that would be grossly um, responsible on my part. However, what I can say at this stage is that um, the institutions worked, the rule of law worked in Malta, and people were arranged to court, and um, we, we are four square behind all the efforts to make sure that uh, the truth surfaces. If a person has done any wrongdoing, of course, he has to um, shoulder the responsibilities. With regard to the Prime Minister, what I can say is that he did all he could, that a crime which occurred under his watch, under his tenure as Prime Minister, be solved in the same legislature. And that is something which doesn't occur often in Malta, that a crime of this importance be solved by under the watch of the same prime minister under whom the crime occurred. Yes, it certainly occurred under his watch. Are you open to the possibility that enough people at the highest levels of government were involved that it can be determined that we can actually say the state itself killed Daphne Caruana Galizia? Well, uh, what, uh, what I say is that the institution, what I can say is that the institutions in Malta 
worked closely with international agencies such as Europol and Interpol and FBI. So, um, you know, the, those institutions work together. They pulled the same rope in order for truth to be surfaced. And that is why we have um, a functioning rule of law which gave results. And, you know, that, that is the judicial process which is carrying on. And hopefully we can unearth the whole truth behind this horrendous murder. Rest assured that in Malta everyone was shocked by, by the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia. It's not something which we took lightly. The murder of a journalist is something very, very serious mm -hmm. in Malta and in Europe, and we, t we left no stone unturned so that the case be solved. And, you know, uh, I have to thank all the institutions who did all they could. They gave their utmost so that the truth surfaces. There is a judicial process now. We have also, we have also agreed on a public inquiry, um, which composition and terms of reference right. were agreed to with the family of Daphne, Caruana Galizia, and hopefully those, those uh, inquir the inquiry and the judicial processes will put on the table all the information and right. all the truth. Yeah, there, there has been a big question mark about governance and justice in your country. You would accept that given the events of the past uh, two years. There were also people who egged you publicly um, they see you as someone at the top of, the, of, of a system they don't trust to give them justice. Do you accept that? Do you accept that ever since that fateful day two years ago, your government deserves to be in the spotlight and deserves to have the book thrown at it? Well, um, protesters um, in Malta are free to, to, to protest. Of course, we live in a democratic country and they are free to, to put their message across. What I can refer to is a mission of MEPs who came to Malta, who spoke to whoever they like to speak to, and they concluded by saying that um, they met the police, they met the institutions, and that they um, believe that the police has done a good job in order to um, unearth the truth. And that is right. what uh, is very, what is important at the end of the day, that the institutions Certainly. do their work they give their utmost so that this case is solved. Uh, yes, and you have a lot of faith in those institutions. I wonder if you were happy with the phone call that, that you had with the European Commission Vice President Vera Jourova. Were you happy with that phone call? I, I want to say two things. First of all, it's not me who has trust in the institutions only. It's not only me who has the trust in institutions, but as I said, even the MEPs who came to Malta and who spoke to the police said that the police has done a very good job in, in putting their utmost to solve this case as they, as they, uh, as the result. But it doesn't sound as if they, they have trust in the institutions. Secondly, yes. Sir. Certainly, but it doesn't sound as if they have trust in the institutions because coming out of that phone call, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is from her spokesman, uh, so, Vera Jourova insisted that the investigation has to be brought to a conclusion without any political interference. She also expressed her concern regarding the situation in Malta and more work needs to be done in Malta on maintaining an independent legal system in the country. So, you have the European Commission not trusting your institutions. You might trust them, but the Europeans are saying something is fishy here. Again, I repeat, it's not only myself who trusts the institution. There is widespread um, agreement that the police in Malta, with the help of Europol, Interpol and FBI, did their best in order to solve this murder case, which, uh, and I have to congratulate them for what they've done. Regarding the call which I had with, uh, with the Vice President Jourova, um, we, we discussed two main issues. First, the need to make sure that there is no uh, political um, effort or um, uh, political tinge to the investigations, which of course there is not, because in Malta we have a system where each major crime is the investigation is presided over by an independent inquiring magistrate who has the task to preserve all the evidence and to conduct the investigation. So that is something which I want to make very clear. Malta um, is, is, is a European country which values the right. rule of law principles. Secondly, uh, during the debate, w during the phone call which I had with Madame Jourova, we discussed also the reforms which we are doing in our country to promote and um, keep uh, evolving the rule of law. Right. In fact, today I have just 
um, inform the Maltese public that um, a major reform in the Office of the Attorney General will take place as from the 18th of December. Okay, okay, and, and you said debate there with regards to the phone call. Maybe it was a Freudian slip. Very finely, when it comes to Daphne Caruana Galizia, this didn't happen in a vacuum. It didn't come out of nowhere. Beforehand, she was harassed. She was stalked. She was smeared. She had people following her. She had members of government, government officials, filing libel suits against her before she was killed. This woman was hounded. She was made to seem as if she was an outsider because she wanted to expose corruption and expose the truth. When it comes to talking about reforms, is that needed as well in your country? The fact that the powerful can be held to account for when they steal, for when they commit crimes? First of all, uh, I have to correct you. Um, um, even the opposition leader um, uh, in Malta had very strong words against Daphne Caruana Galizia when she used to conduct investigatory work. And uh, so it's not an issue like you're trying to okay, paint. So that, government, you know, okay, so the politicians. Party in government politicians. Was, okay, so government. Politicians. Okay. So, but even, even the party in opposition. Secondly, I, yes. condemn, I, condemn, uh, I condemn any harassment coming from which place it comes against any journal. I'm very journalist, I'm very clear. I condemn any harassment done against any journalist. Here we are speaking about a European country which cherishes the values um, of, of journalism and pluralism. And, uh, you know, um, I definitely um, uh, condemn any harassment done against people, against journalists who are doing their job. Uh, secondly, um, I have to send this message very clearly that the institutions in Malta uh, function, they work, they are independent, they do their job, and in fact, in less than, or actually in around about two years from the murder of Daphne Caruana Carizia, um, the, the, the case is in a position where um, people who were arranged to court not only for actually committing the murder, but also allegedly um, being the brain behind the murder itself. So, um, yes, there is important progress on this case, and it means that in Malta, whoever breaks the law has uh, the rule of law running after him, because in Malta, the rule of law reigns, reigns supreme. The Justice Minister of Malta, Owen Bonnici, I thank you for taking the time to talk to us.